Hello and welcome back. Today's video is taking place in Rome, Remastered Alexander. Today's historical battle that we are going over is the Battle of Chironia. In this battle we play as Alexander the Great and we have four cavalry units, incl not including our own, so that would be five heavy cavalry units under our control. We are aiding our father's army, who is led by Philip II of Macedon, trying to destroy Greek forces that are stopping our conquest into southern Greece. So, now we're, I'm going to go into the historical battle menu, we're going to listen to a narration, basically some history behind the battle, and then I'm going to mute that, and then I'm going to go over the units, and then we'll get into the actual battle. So, let's do it. Centuries before the birth of Christ, the citizens of the Greek city-states and those of Persia were uneasy neighbors. And by the end of the 6th century BC, many of the Greek trading settlements in Asia Minor had fallen under Persian dominion. Two Persian military expeditions were beaten back by only the narrowest of margins at Marathon, at sea near Salamis, and at Plataea the following year. With the unifying threat posed by the Persians thus weakened, the victorious coalition of Greek cities dissolved into vicious infighting. Meanwhile, Philip II of Macedonia was building a powerful modern army with more heavily armoured phalanx and heavy cavalry for mobility. By 338 BC, Philip had conquered the whole of northern Greece. And the remaining Greek forces moved to counter this new threat at the Battle of Chironia. Alright, so now I'm going to mute the narration audio. I'm going to discuss the units. So as you can see, we are playing as Alexander the Great, and we have five total cavalry units. Uh, these are heavy cavalry units, which means they'll be able to do massive damage while also being able to stay in the fight for a long time. Let's look at uh, the second army, which is under our allies' command, which is Philip II of Macedon, our father. We have his own unit, uh, two javelinmen units, and then the rest is spearmen units. Uh, and then finally, let's look at the Greek army. We have the enemy general, uh, two units of skirmishers, and then finally a lot of hoplites. And then they also have three units of Theban sacred band spearmen. These are their strongest units and the units we will be focusing against. Our father's army will be engaging the hoplites in hand-to-hand -hand combat while we will try to destroy the Theban forces because they are very powerful and they could easily defeat our own troops. So we're going to have to be careful. Let's get into this battle. It is 338 BC, and relations between the cities of Greece and the Kingdom of Macedon have broken down. Philip, King of Macedon, is on the move south, a means to bring the cities of Athens and Thebes to heel. Assembled against him on the plains of Chironia are the combined forces of the Athenian and Theban armies. Among their numbers are the dreaded Theban sacred band, an elite corps of 300 spearmen. Philip knows that their very presence on the battlefield will strike terror into the hearts of his men. But Philip has a secret weapon of his own. He is joined on his march by his son Alexander, commanding the elite Macedonian cavalry. Alexander is young in age, but exceptional in personal courage and ability. The cavalry under his command will be key today in finding victory. Philip knows that the Thebans will have to be neutralized and quickly if his men are to find the necessary resolve to hold back the Greek phalanx. The plan is for Philip to engage the main Greek line with the Macedonian phalanx. At the same time, Alexander will lead his cavalry against the three sacred band units by the river. Should Alexander fail to neutralize the Thebans or wander from his objective, the Macedonian army will likely be overcome.
Alexander must find a way to defeat the sacred band with his cavalry if his father and country are to taste victory today. All right, so I'm going to now tell you the strategy behind this battle, and then I'll show you how to implement it. So, as you can see, the Greeks are already set up and ready to fight. Over here on the left side, we have the three Theban units, and on the all the way on the right, they have one unit of hoplites. Uh, these four units in total, they will be just standing on the side and not actually participating in most of the battle. This is just to stop our own forces from flanking around and hitting uh, their center line from the back, which would be devastating if we managed to do that. Uh, then, of course, their center line will be engaging with our father's entire army. They happen to have more troops than we do, so that means they can easily spare those few four units to stand on the side. Uh, what we have to do is we have to draw out the Thebans because throughout the entire battle they will just stand there. They won't move at all. So we have to draw them out and then only using our cavalry we will have to trick them in such a way that we manage to surround them and use brute force to crush them. So let's do this. But there's one thing I have to say before we get into this because this will ruin your day. You might be doing really well, but if you... Uh, attack anywhere towards the center that's really far from the Thebans, even right here, the third unit from the left, the morale will just terribly drop and your entire father's army will just begin routing even if they have taken barely any casualties. So you have to be careful of this because just like the narrator said, we can't wander from the task at hand. So, and the only way to draw out the Thebans is to engage local units, so we're going to have to be very careful of how we do that. So, without a further ado, let's begin. First, we're going to move our units back just a little bit, just to make some room for the flanking that's going to take place. And then we can just sit down and watch as the battle begins. And now the lines have collided. Now what we have to do is wait for the Thebans to get in position, let them fight a little bit, and then we'll go in. I'm going to speed up the time, wait for them to settle down a bit, and then we're going to attack the closest hoplite unit so that we draw the Theban attention, but we don't demoralize our allied units. Now you have to be not afraid to take casualties, you have to be willing to charge in and take the hit. Just trying to draw their attention a little bit. Unfortunately that did not seem to work. Uh, let's try and do one more charge. Because what we have to basically do is weaken this so it seems as if we're about to break through and begin flanking so that they're forced to react. And even though we're kind of flanking, they don't seem to be reacting at all. Well, then I'll take advantage of this opportunity and flank myself. Alright, we're going to hit them in the back because the second we destroy all three of these units, the enemy force will rout almost immediately, so we just have to get that out of the way. Just get this done and we'll be good. There we go, they're finally moving. At the worst time possible. That's fine. Uh, 
We have to be careful because although we will have to use brute force to break through, we, we don't want to get absolutely destroyed. And when that enemy general comes out, which they usually do quite quickly, uh, just kill them. That will help out in the battle greatly. Alright, so now this is a bit of an unfortunate situation where we're being uh, split up. But that's fine, we can still carry this out. I just want to take out the enemy general, and that will speed up the entire battle by a lot. So what you need to do is basically just... there we go. Just strike the enemy when they're looking away. Use small skirmishes, basically, to draw their attention in a different direction and then hit them from where they're not expecting it. No, 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 no. I would have engaged them, but I noticed that we slightly turned into an unfortunate angle. not exactly ideal, but we will have to improvise. Alright, now that we've completely surrounded them, this is the time to take down at least one of the units. When you completely surround them, there we go. When you completely surround them, that's when you strike them the hardest. That's when they begin run running. Alright, good. We're splitting them up, which is exactly what we need, except I don't want that one Theban unit getting too far away and hitting our vulnerable allies. There we go. Just trying to avoid these hoplites here. So I can hit these annoying Theban units that like to move away out of the way. There we go, Alexander leading the charge. And as you see, they immediately begin routing. And victory, just like that. This did not turn out the way I planned, but that's fine. We have... So... I've played this battle five times already, and this did not turn out the way it normally does. Still a victory nonetheless. So basically what would normally happen is you would hit one of the units, the hoplite unit, and that would cause the Thebans to react. They would move outwards, and you would just easily pick them off one by one by doing as you saw towards the end here where I completely surrounded them. That's basically what you would do. Uh, Unfortunately, this time they seemed very unresponsive, so I just pushed my luck, and when they finally did react, I did not expect that to happen, and my forces were split up, and they and the Thebans also moved on, but that was fine. Things like this will happen. The battle will not always go perfectly. Sometimes you just gotta adapt. So now let's look at the results. So we deployed 301 soldiers. What a beautiful number. Uh, we had only 193 left, which is not that bad. That means we lost over 100. But considering we defeated an entire army, and if, if we had not taken action, if we had not destroyed those Theban units, not only would our father's army have been completely destroyed, but the Greeks would still have an army remaining, which, as you can see, 25 soldiers is not much of an army. So... Considering how, by using 300 soldiers and losing just over 100, we managed to kill a few hundred of them and then cause the remaining of their army to rout, I think that was pretty successful. I would like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Have a good day.